Welcome to the CSSN channel. Our topic for today is exercise in cold weather. My name is Abu Zar Habibinia. I have an MD degree and I'm the director of the Canadian Academy of Sport Nutrition. Subscribe to the CSSN channel on YouTube to enjoy the information that we share on a regular basis about medicine, weight loss, fitness, and sport nutrition. Okay, it is winter time, it is cold out there, and because of lockdowns, Due to the pandemic, they have closed almost all gyms worldwide. That's why many people go outside for exercise. And we have been asked many questions about exercising in cold weather, and I'm gonna answer all those questions through this short presentation. This presentation is going to be in four parts. In first part, we're gonna discuss hydration and fluid balance when you exercise in cold weather. In part two, we discuss energy sources and metabolism. In part three, I'm going to show you the eight groups of people that should not exercise in cold weather. And finally, in part four, together we're going to review the 10 safety guidelines when exercising in cold weather. Let's go with part one. Exercise in cold weather has its own significant physiological and psychological challenges. The physiological strain and effects of exercise in cold weather depends on four factors. Number one, hydration level. Number two, body metabolism. Number three, body fat and the insulating effect of subcutaneous fat against heat loss. And number four, environmental temperature. In general, when you exercise in cold weather, you're going to lose lots of water by three important mechanisms, and you can be easily dehydrated. Let's review those three mechanisms. Number one, you lose water through the airways. I'm sure you know that one of the functions of the airways is to warm and humidify the incoming air before reaching the lungs. Cold air usually doesn't damage the airways by itself. When you exercise in cold weather, you're gonna breathe in large volumes of cold, dry air. And your airways, they have two important jobs to do. Number one, your airways, they have to warm it up. Usually, no matter what the temperature of the air you breathe in, your airways will warm it up to 27 to 32 centigrade degree before reaching the bronchi. This will lead to heat loss from the airways. The second important job of the airways is to humidify the incoming air. In general, when you exercise, depending on environmental temperature, your airways will release two to five milliliters of water per minute to moisturize the incoming air. This will lead to water loss from the airways it is interesting to know that you can lose as much as one liter of fluid per day when you exercise in cold weather two interesting facts here number one when you exercise in cold weather you feel dry in your mouth you feel burning sensation in the throat and airways they are because of the water loss and not heat loss second fact after exercising in cold weather, during the recovery period, some people, they're going to start coughing, which is common, especially among those people with asthma. Studies show that post-exercise cough after exercising in cold weather has a direct relationship with water loss and not heat loss. One more thing in here. There is a myth and a sort of misconception that some people believe if you exercise in cold weather, especially in an extreme cold weather, you may freeze your lungs. The science doesn't support this. But let's keep in mind that even air as cold as minus 40 will be 100% warm and humidified before reaching the bronchi. The second mechanism is this, increased urine production. That is true. Cold stress stimulates the kidneys to increase urine production and the third mechanism is this increased sweating 
which comes from exercise and excessive clothing. Let's go to part two. When you exercise in cold weather, the energy source and metabolism will change for sure. Let's go to source of energy first. When you are going to do any kind of low intensity exercise in cold weather, let's say you are out for a brisk walk, your body is going to start using fats mostly as a source of energy. But as the duration of exercise increases, the body is going to switch from fats to carbohydrates. This is what happens. Cold stress is going to stimulate the adrenal glands to increase the production of two hormones, epinephrine and norepinephrine. When the blood levels of epinephrine and norepinephrine are increased, they are going to increase heat production. And also when the blood levels of these two hormones are increased, this is going to increase the blood levels of free fatty acids, which basically they are going to be the source of your energy. However, as the duration of exercise increases and the temperature in the skin drops, the blood levels of free fatty acids do not increase anymore in proportion to high levels of these two hormones. What happens next? Your thyroid gland will come to help. The thyroid is going to increase the production of T4, which is going to contribute to heat production. And also, because the blood levels of free fatty acids cannot be increased to generate basically energy for you, the body is gonna switch to use carbohydrates in the forms of blood sugar and glycogen. Glycogen is the stored uh, form of carbohydrates in the liver and muscles. Number two, shivering. Shivering plays an important role in maintaining the core body temperature. It is interesting to know that the core body temperature is about uh, 4 centigrade degrees higher than skin temperature. When you have exposure to cold, skin temperature drops. When skin temperature drops, this is going to stimulate peripheral cold receptors in the skin and the signals will go to the cortex and hypothalamus in the brain. Then the cortex of the brain and the hypothalamus, they will initiate some responses to preserve or generate heat. And one of the responses is shivering. That's why when you shiver, core body temperature is going to go up. And also when you shiver, oxygen consumption is going to increase. And you know that anytime oxygen consumption increases, basal metabolic rate is going to go up. That's why shivering when you have exposure to cold can actually increase basal metabolic rate three to five times. Number three, subcutaneous fat. Subcutaneous fat is going to act as an insulator to prevent heat loss because uh, subcutaneous fat contains less water than uh, muscles. That's why they can act as an insulator. The insulating effect of subcutaneous fat is extremely important in three groups of people. And I have put them in here for you. Deep sea divers, ocean swimmers, and those people who live in Arctic. Let's go with part three. Here are the eight groups of people that should avoid exercising in cold weather. Group one, people with heart disease. If you have been diagnosed with any kind of heart disease, if you have had heart attack in the past, if you have uncontrolled high blood pressure, you should avoid exercising in cold weather, especially shoveling snow. Unfortunately, the number of heart attacks increases during a snow season. Here is the reason. Shoveling snow is a sort of upper body exercise. 
upper body especially the arms they have a smaller muscle mass and vasculature which is going to generate a greater resistance to blood flow which is going to lead to a significant rise in blood pressure both systolic and diastolic that's why if you have the heart attack in the past or if you have uncontrolled high blood pressure you should avoid exercising in cold weather and especially shoveling snow group two people with asthma group three people who have been diagnosed with burger disease burger disease it's a kind of disease that affects the vessels of the fingers and toes and it is coming among smokers group four people with cold induced urticaria group five those people who have been diagnosed with renal disease or phenomenon group six people with peripheral atherosclerosis unfortunately peripheral atherosclerosis is common among those people with diabetes especially if their uh, diseases have not been controlled properly group seven children children they have a larger body surface area per body mass than adults which facilitates heat loss that's why children cannot maintain body temperature and they should never exercise in cold weather and group eight elderly people for a couple of reasons in elderly people the sense of thirst has been diminished which is going to increase the risk of dehydration and also elderly people they don't have enough uh, subcutaneous fat which is going to act as an insulator to prevent heat loss and also elderly people they have less lean mass to generate heat that's why they should avoid exercising in cold weather as well let's go to part four let's together review the 10 safety guidelines for exercising in cold weather number one drink plenty of water now you know when you exercise in cold weather you will lose lots of water through the airways that's why you have to drink plenty of water to prevent from dehydration number two have adequate amounts of complex carbohydrates about one hour one hour and a half before your exercise number three wear a scarf or mask type balaclava to, to warm and humidify the incoming air number four cover the upper chest up to your chin i call it the thyroid territory number five dress in three layers usually the first layer should be a light synthetic material such as a polypropylene this is to absorb moisture and uh, sweat the second layer should be a woolen material to insulate the body against heat loss and the third layer should be a waterproof and wind resistant material number six always wear a hat gloves and sturdy footwears you know it is interesting to know that about 20 percent of heat will be lost through your head when you exercise so when you're exercising in cold weather simply by wearing a hat actually you can save lots of heat and sturdy footwears they have good traction that can prevent from slip and fall when you're exercising on snow or ice number seven no alcohol after exercise this is something that we see here and there after exercising in cold weather some people they drink alcohol basically to sort out to warm up themselves even though alcohol is going to act as a peripheral vasodilator but we never recommend drinking alcohol after your exercise in cold weather because alcohol is going to delay your recovery big time number eight use a sunscreen or sunblock to protect the exposed areas of the body uh, from direct solar radiation especially when you're exercising on snow number nine pay attention to weather forecast especially if you are going to participate in a wilderness competitions and number 10 inform someone let someone know that you are out for an exercise 
let them know about your route and if possible carry with yourself a fully charged cell phone this was about exercise in cold weather and i really hope that you learned something interesting today because we make science easy to understand now you know and if you don't want to miss our next videos you can subscribe to the CSSN channel on YouTube. Until next time, stay safe, stay connected.